the bank nifty is the one which is weak down about 200 points now the nifty is uh, getting slightly worse down about 40 points absolutely flat markets there's about a two odd point change lower on the nifty the nifty is virtually at the day's high indian markets seeing a sharp recovery from lows led by banks and reliance frontline indices are at the day's highest once again you know huge big volume led gain across the board 17.828 is where the nifty finally left off you're entering the future ready cnbc tv 18 ebix cash studio hello and welcome to the cnbc tv 18 ebix cash studios you're with us here on markets today the show where we track the six hours of the day's trading action in five headlines i am prashant Nair. with me my colleague sonar Bhutra. let's uh, before we sort of get to what happened in the day let me just quickly run us through run our viewers through the headlines which mattered. Here's headline number one. Markets see a sharp recovery in the second half. Nifty and Sensex end over half a percent higher. Reliance and banks lead from the front. Mid-cap index ends at record highs. Major oil-producing countries decide not to raise output crude source to a seven-year high. ONGC rallies 11%. Other OMCs also gain on the hopes of inventory gains. Disruptions in China spell higher demand and prices for non-China dependent Indian chemical players like Arthi Industries and Deepak Nitride stocks rally over 3% each. Bharti, Airtel and Vodafone ideas soar after the Supreme Court grants the Department of Telecom time to revise the 40,000 crore rupee one-time spectrum charge next hearing on November 17th. Reliance hits record highs after Morgan Stanley gives the stock a thumbs up. Tata Power gains 6% on higher prospects of MSCI inclusion. Gujarat Gas also gains on price increases. All right, those are the top headlines that we are tracking at this hour. Of course, we'll speak to them in greater detail. Let's take a look at how the markets fared in today's trade. But before we do that, here's the lineup of what we have in store for you. It's a packed show today. In market opinion, we have with us Shane Oliver of AMP Capital, Pratik Gupta of Kodak Securities, and Jahangir Aziz of JP Morgan. From markets to corporate voices now, Malik Mehta, ED and CEO of Deepak Nitride, and Rajendra Gogri, Chairman and Managing Director of Aarti Industries, will be joining us with their view on China's power outage. But before we get to all of that, Prashant, interesting day, sharp recovery in the second half. What did you make of the day? You know, in, uh, all through the day, Solar, we were saying that the rest of the markets were not doing well and India was standing out. But that was true for a while. It's just that I think the green here rubbed off everywhere else as well. Because, you know, as you look at markets now, you realize that, well, I mean, actually a lot of Asia, which was uh, flat to lower, picked up pace. I mean, actually, there's a lot of green in Asia now. Uh, I mean, by the end of it, Europe is higher. U.S. futures are not doing all that badly. So... Uh, at one point, I mean, the, uh, India was like sort of the lone warrior, but uh, it had uh, company later on. Uh, what did well? I mean, it's basically, once again, the old economy stocks, which uh, really were, to uh, were topping the charts. Government companies, I mean, CPSC stocks, uh, the PSU bank stocks, uh, energy, a uh, fair bit of overlap there, infrastructure. Metals did well in the first half, and they kind of sort of dropped off in the second half, not really there. Uh, Pharma is the other one, which, uh, again, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, what did well yesterday, did not do well today. So metals and pharma, uh, but still higher, broadly higher. Uh, IT has come back into rotation once again. The index lost about 6-7% last week. Uh, Infosys, TCS, etc. doing well by close. Broader markets, there was a little bit of cool off. I mean, the small cap index at the high point, at one point, actually, another high point of the day, was up 1%. The mid cap index was up almost three quarters. There was a little bit of cool off there. But no such problems for the Nifty. Uh, and of course, I mean, uh, led by names like ONGC, etc., uh, where, uh, you know, stocks are still cheap. I mean, ONGC at current prices, at current oil prices, I think it's, uh, still, it's st still available at about four times earnings. So, uh, you know, if the, the point, of course, is that commodities have to stay where they are uh, for it to start to translate into earnings. There was, of course, the gas price increase as well. But ONGC, of course, uh, is a story which we will discuss a little later here on. In terms of stocks, uh, Sonal, tell us more. Oh, a long list uh, today, Prashant. And you spoke about the energy names, the PSU space. Uh, so ONGC, of course, tops my list. We had Indicent Bank came out with their quarter two update. That looked good, so the stock was up 4.5%. Coal India, again, uh, from the PSU basket. In IOC, 
uh, expectation of higher inventory gains, that stock was up IOC and of course Reliance, 17.5 lakh crore in terms of market cap at a record high yet again, so that stock was in focus. In the losing list, not many names and the losses are not as uh, huge as well. So Sipla and Hindalco, Hindalco did see some profit taking in trade today in the broader markets. A lot of movers from the start uh, of trade, we saw that advanced decline ratio was in the favor of advances. So uh, the movers out there included the likes of Tata Power, we had AB Fashion and Retail, Pyramid Enterprises, uh, of course, RT Industries, the chemical theme continues, HPCL, Deepak Nitride, JNFC, GSFC, JK Paper, because they said the demand is back to pre-COVID levels. They've taken price hikes of around 4 to 5 percent as well. On the losing side, uh, some profit taking in the real estate names. We had DLF, Godrej Properties, all of them down anywhere between 2 to 3 percent. India Simmons as well. Ipka Labs also, after a sharp run, saw some profit taking. And Ipka Indiamart, that was up around 5, 6 percent yesterday. But today, it was in the red down around 1.5%, Prashant. Okay, that's stock-specific action. And market opinion, we uh, heard from Shane Oliver of AMP Capital, who says that the U.S. markets, at least for now, seem to be heading into some sort of a correction territory. Adds that short term, uh, in the short term, the trend there is possibly down. Listen in. I think we're now heading into correction territory, if not already there. Uh, that, those list of worries, I think, uh, will ultimately resolve themselves, uh, but it will take some time to do that. We're also going through September. We're now into October. This period of the year is renowned for corrections. October can be a turnaround month, um, but the first half of October tends to be fairly weak. So my feeling is for the short term, the trend in the market is probably still down. It's the energy shortage is mainly political. I think that will go away under pressure. Uh, there is these issues about inflation. Many of the issues around inflation are still a function of coronavirus. Well, let's get into more market opinion now. Prateek Gupta, the CEO and co-head of institutional equities at Kotak Securities, said that Indian markets have outperformed other Asian markets. Listen into what he had to say. Our market has actually been one of the best performing uh, markets in the world. Uh, in fact, uh, I was just looking at the numbers yesterday. Uh, India is now an outlier versus almost all emerging markets. We are up 27% year to date, whereas the MSCI EM index is actually down 3%. China is down 7%. Now, at this point, uh, valuations have become an issue. Uh, in our conversations at Kotak with uh, global institutional investors, I think uh, this is a unanimous complaint that uh, while people do want to invest in India, given that what's going on in China, and there is there's definitely a willingness to shift into India. But at the same time, the valuations are keeping people at bay. We are trading at about uh, slightly over 21 times FY23 earnings. Um, and, and that itself is uh, quite a, you know, well, well above the historical averages. Okay, valuations are high and uh, they have been high for a while. Crude oil uh, jumped to multi-year highs after OPEC Plus decided not to raise output. Uh, ONGC and Oil India, along with OMC, such as BPCL, gained in trade. Uh, I mean, Brent actually is up uh, another near percent or so at about 82. Manisha is here to decode the oil rally. Manisha. Well, yes, the run-up in the energy sector has just about continued. We are looking at the crude oil prices for U.S. at around seven-year highs, and the Brent is trading at a three-year highs as well. Not just crude, when you look at the petroleum products like heating oil and natural gas, we are trading at a fresh seven-year highs for these as well. The latest trigger clearly has been from OPEC, which has uh, continued to stick to its plan of increasing output by 400,000 barrels per day. There has been pressure from U.S. and India, the major consuming countries, on OPEC to increase production. But OPEC says that going forward, the demand growth from now until December is just about 700,000 barrels per day and 400,000 barrels per day of an increase from now every month until the end of year would be really enough. OPEC also says that they are expecting a surplus in 2022, so it is important to stick to the current plan and is the reason we have these, seen this sentiment run up in case of crude prices. Well, last month was all about Hurricane Ida and we saw 10% of gains in crude prices for the month of September and October. October already has seen around 4 to 5 percent of gains across energy sector here. The markets also are looking at very strong price forecast for 2022. The major oil producers and traders in the global markets like Vitol says 
that they are looking at $75 of an average crude prices in the next year. Gunvor says that $85 is where the crude prices could hit in next year. And the most bullish of reports or forecast comes in from Trafigura. They expect $90 on a higher demand for crude from plastics and jet fuel demand. And that could keep the crude prices running higher. <clears throat> Manisha, thank you very much uh, for that. And of course, I mean, it showed up sonal in ONGC, didn't it? 10%. Wow. 10%. And that stock has been on a tear, yeah. right? So uh, because of the higher crude oil prices, that definitely is a positive $1 per barrel increase in crude oil prices uh, adds around 3 to 4% to its EPS. And crude oil prices are up 60% this year itself. Uh, now, other than that, uh, more ma positive macros for the company. Gas prices, they increased 62%. So Nomura has come out with a note where they said every $1 per MMB2 increase in gas prices increases uh, absolute EBITDA by 5,160 crore rupees, profit after tax by 3,400 3, crore rupees and EPS by 2.7 rupees per share for ONGC. That's around 14 to 16 percent increase in terms of EPS. This is on crude and on APM gas, but we are not talking about deep water gas realizations, which ICICI Securities expects to increase even further because of higher spot LNG prices. They expect deep water gas price to be up 48 percent on a YY basis in FY23. That will again add on to the realizations and valuation still cheap uh, one of the cheapest in the listed space is ONGC around five times one year forward earnings so looks like there is more action uh, which is possible in this counter all right 163 164 I mean uh, what a move the third headline then today a disruption in China spelled higher demand and prices for non-China dependent Indian chemical players companies like RT Industries and Deepak Nitrite particularly in focus uh, uh, right back at you, uh, Sonal. I mean, again, uh, the move continues in, in oh, that sense. Oh, absolutely. And it is a positive. We have yeah. spoken to so many companies. We have spoken to dealers. And the biggest impact is that the basic chemicals industry, that will be positively impacted. Uh, Kodak put out a note uh, today. We spoke about the price hikes yesterday. They said that there will be medium-term challenges for downstream producers. However, it will benefit base chemical suppliers. Frequent supply disruptions will strengthen the case for quality Indian players, is the word coming in from Kodak. So they say, how will the downstream chemical companies be impacted? Well, there will be non-available of raw materials which will drive production outages. Raw material will be available but there will be significant cost denting margins. Uh, raw material will lead to price hikes and that will impact consumer demand. So that is about the downstream companies. But other than that, all the upstream companies will see a price hike and they will see volume, uh, uh, volume, higher volumes as well and market leadership. What uh, stocks will benefit according to Kotak? Uh, RT Industries, SRF and Tata Chemicals are the ones which will benefit. However, UPL is one which could not because they already put out a note saying that raw material prices for some of their products is going higher uh, but it totally depends on what kind of price hikes they take but overall uh, it has been a positive it has seen a positive impact because of higher prices and supply disruptions Prashant. Mm. You know let's actually play out uh, some of the opinion that we got from companies I mean uh, we spoke with as you said Deepak Nitride, Aarti Industries listen into what they told us. There has been a marked difference between uh, September beginning and October beginning in uh, quite a few of our products. We don't know whether this is something that will persist through the quarter, but certainly it is here now. We look at things as basic chemicals and intermediate uh, chemicals speciality, but internally what we do is we look at them as push chemicals and pull chemicals. So when you have Full chemicals, essentially ones where as long as you make and you make well at the right quality, at the right price, there are various end segments that will buy from you. In those chemicals, because uh, you know there is a very high volume and there is fast movement turnover, uh, in these places, we're seeing a very quick uh, response with regards to availability shortages and price increases. Whereas with chemicals, which are more push chemicals, more 1v1 and, you know, uh, more sustainable uh, long-term agreements which have a formula-based pass-through arrangement. So in those cases, what we have is we have a pass-through of the cost increase. We are also totally backward integrated. You know, our major raw material, benzene and tolvins are uh, available in India. Also, tolvin is imported, not dependent on uh, China. So for our chemical segment, virtually we don't have any dependence on uh, China for uh, raw materials. Right, okay, and that's the reason why, uh, I mean, the markets bid both these stocks higher. Uh, inputs not really dependent on China, but I mean, they enjoy uh, as prices go up for end, uh, end product prices. We'll take a very quick break here. We are back. More headlines, more opinion in just a bit.
Hi, welcome back. You're still with us on Markets Today. Let's go to the rest of the headlines that we are tracking for you. The fourth headline today. In what may come as a relief for telecom companies, the Supreme Court has granted the Department of Telecom time to reconsider the 40,000 crore rupee one-time spectrum charge. Ashmit Kumar is here with more details on the same. Ashmit. Well, the case, just for the benefit of our viewers, is about the levy of one-time spectrum charge or the OTSC. Now, the DOT had sought to levy it in 2012, and since then, uh, we've seen a spate of litigation. That amount, or the original OTSC demand, combined with the interest over the years, has now added up to a huge figure of 40,000 crore rupees. That's the figure uh, that's staring the telecom sector in the space. Now, speaking of the sector, the DOT today, in its affidavit, as well as uh, in its submissions before the Apex Court, pointed out that there is a considerable stress uh, in the sector. There is no denying that. Uh, in fact, uh, they even uh, pointed out that various banks have expressed concerns about the fact that there could be a possibility of a duopoly. Uh, there could be lack of competition. There could be players that could be going under. Uh, these are the various concerns that have come to mind. In fact, the government goes on to say in its affidavit uh, that even after various measures have been undertaken by the uh, by the government. In fact, a reference was made to the cabinet uh, approval for the telecom relief package. Despite these measures, there's not much result in terms of uh, health of the sector, in terms of boosting competition. And towards that end, uh, the DOT told the Apex Court that this is the context within which we need to now reconsider and review the very need to levy this 40,000 crore rupee levy. And towards that end, they had sought for time that give us some time. We want to reconsider if this is uh, what works best for the health of the sector, if this will benefit the players. And towards that end, uh, they have said that they need to reconsider. So a U-turn possibly could be on the card. The DOT will take time to arrive on that decision. The Supreme Court, the only caveat the Supreme Court slipped in is Let's also be a little careful with respect to public money. But with that, the Supreme Court has allowed the DOT to go back to the drawing board. November 17th is when this case will be get, uh, will get taken up once again, and that's when we'll get clarity on whether the DOT has finalized its position and whether it will reconsider and discontinue with this 40,000 crore rupee levy. Back to you. Ashmin, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, you know, sticking with the telecom space, Bharti Airtel's rights issue opened today at a 31% premium. Reema is here with the details. Reema. Thanks so much for that. So today is day one when Bharti's rights entitlement shares are trading on the exchanges. The price is usually a combination of the intrinsic value and a premium or a discount. The intrinsic value would be the current market price of Bharti Airtel minus the rights issue price of 535. On that, there is usually a premium or a discount depending on the demand and supply situation. So currently, Bharti Airtel is in demand. There was expected to be a premium on the intrinsic value of 30 to 40 rupees because there is also a delay in the collection of the balance money. If you remember, only 25% has to be paid up front. The balance 75% has to be paid when the company makes uh, those additional calls in the next 36 months. So because you get to participate in the Bharti Airtel stock at a lower deployment uh, there is a premium which these rights entitlement shares command and uh, that is what you can see on your screen which is estimated to be about 30 to 40 rupees which is what you can see uh, today so today um, is uh, when the rights issue of Bharti Airtel opens and it will be available till the and it will be closing on the 21st of this month Reema, thank you so much for joining us with all those details. So that's the update as far as Bharti Airtel is concerned. But let's move on to the fifth headline today. Morgan Stanley is betting big on Reliance with an overweight call and has also raised its target price for the stock. Reliance ended the day 2% higher and that was something that uh, added onto the gains on the Nifty. Nimesh is joining us with all those details. Nimesh? Well, today's standard report was on Reliance Industries, a massive report from Morgan Stanley uh, today morning. They've maintained an overweight stance, but they've sharply raised the target price in Reliance Industries to 29.25. Uh, they expect both silicon and hydrogen to emerge as next decade's new oil for Reliance Industries. They see a potential $60 billion uh, value creation if everything falls into place uh, by 2025. In fact, they're baking in uh, a $25 billion uh, contribution into one year forward NEV and expect a steady 11 to 13% uh, uh, return on capital employed for Reliance Industries. In fact, the new energy EBITDA uh, could be as large as what Reliance's current petrochem business is, but the multiples are going to be at least two times more, uh, according to Morgan Stanley, and hence they believe there is a good risk reward. Uh, though, the, uh, those, though the stock has rallied 27% Y2D, uh, still it trades at a discount to market and global peers, and hence the uh, Morgan Stanley has sharply raised the target price in Reliance Industries now to, uh, to, uh, to 29.25. 
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nimesh, for that. Tata Power continues its move. I mean, it's up 7% today, and I think it's up about 14% for the week already. Uh, you know, incredible run. What's keeping the stock excited? Agam is here uh, with a quick wrap out. Agam. So Tata Power has certainly seen a very strong up move today, building on the kind of gains that we have seen in the previous few days as well. In fact, over the last five days, it's moved up as much as 40% and on good volumes too. Today's intraday volumes are the highest in the last three months. And if you consider the last five-day average volumes as well, that's up as much as two and a half times as compared to the last one month. Now, among the many reasons that we are seeing Tata Power currently trading at around 26 times, which is at the upper end of its historical average for value, Valuation. Well, it's firstly the we were looking at improving plant load factors because of this uh, demand surge. We're also looking at the management's uh, commentary on the coal supplies, which where they say it's uh, very very manageable. And uh, even amid co co supply constraints, they're looking at improving profitability in its larger segment transmission and distribution. There's a su substantial pickup in its solar equipment as well as picking up pace in EV charging stations. And there is also a technical factor. Now, according to a note in e Edel. Wise, they say that should Tata Power sustain at these current levels, well, it makes it a candidate uh, in terms of the MSI, MSCI in indices inclusion, which will, of course, mean more uh, well inflows into the stock. And that's also the reason why we have seen so much strength in today. Uh, Agam, thank you very much, Tata Power. But we'll stick with that space. Uh, you know, Gujarat Gas raised over 3% on the back of uh, certain price increases by the company. I mean, actually... Uh, very large price increases. Uh, so 627, the stock came off after a big gap up. Sonal, uh, take us through what happened. Well, it definitely was a steep price hike this time around, especially in the industrial segment. A uh, nine and a half rupees per SCM hike. That's a 28% hike that the company took just after the price hike that they had taken in the month of August. Even in terms of CNG prices, uh, they were hiked by two and a half rupees per kg. And as expected, it is because globally gas prices have been going up. For Gujarat Gas, their major sourcing is from spot LNG prices, and that have gone through that has gone through the roof. So that is at a multi-year high. Now, interestingly, ICI securities put out a note yesterday where they said that of course company needs further price hikes but if that does happen it would mean volumes may fall down further for the company so going forward the company may have to choose between volume growth and margins in fy23 right now spot lng uh, spot lng futures are at 16.8 dollars per mmbtu so the company might have to change its uh, gas sourcing mix because Last time, when they had actually taken the price hike, Prashant, uh, company did see some impact on volume. So this is something we'll be tracking for now. They have been able to manage margins, but volumes is something we'll be tracking. All right. Uh, Sonal, thank you very much uh, for that. Well, it's a wrap on this edition of uh, Markets Today. From Sonal, me, everyone on the team, it's goodbye. Thanks very much for staying with us. More comes up in just a bit.